Okay, the four points now. First, the single point meditation in five minutes. Okay, uh, let's be mindful of the errors in meditation and the remedies to be applied. Errors to fault, mental laxity, and excitement. Very good. Okay, should any of these two things happen, uh, no need to worry. We are bound to be affected by one of these two errors. Apply the remedies. And how many remedies? Two remedies. Two, what are they? Very good. Introspection and mindfulness. So, should any of these two things, any, whether they happen or not, once in a while keep an eye on the on mind to see whether one is meditating or is in a relaxed state or is the, in an excited state or scattered state. If it, so, that is done by the introspection. The moment you see that your mind is dis, distracted or in a relaxed state, and the job of the introspection is done. Next is the job of the mindfulness. That is to bring the mind back to the intended object of the meditation. Are you ready? So that is very important to the, be mindful of the two, uh, the errors meditation and to apply the remedies. Okay, ready?
Okay. Our next pronunciation. Detach yourself from the five sensory engagements, be in the present moment, follow the instructions, and try as much to experience. Invoke the experience, various experiences, as being valid. Renunciation. Renunciation is to renounce miseries. To renounce miseries, we need to know how to renounce causal miseries for the reason that miseries, they don't arise randomly, they arise from the causes. All these phenomena arise from causes. What the causes are is indicated by the Tathagata. So to renounce the causes, to renounce miseries, we need to renounce causes. To renounce causes, we are identified by the causes are. The cause of primarily the ignorance. Four levels of ignorance. To eradicate the four levels of ignorance, the four seeds are taught. First, all composite things in permanent. Composite, any phenomenon which is composed of the material, special, the special parts, material parts. And which are composed of the temporal symbols of the parts, like the temporal symbols of the mind. Anything which is composed of such parts should necessarily be impermanent in nature. And the impermanence of two kinds, gross and subtle. The gross was continuum stumps, and the subtle in the form of momentary symbols. In our own lives, the last 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, 50 years, 60 years, 70 years, we have experience of merriments, enjoyments, festivals, and so forth, celebrations. Like the thunderstorm, like the beautiful rainbow, they are all gone, they disappear. 2018, however beautiful it was, it is gone now. This is impermanence. And 200 years ago, there are people of same, of same age as us, the parents, the children. The parents have so much expectations on their children. Children have their own aspirations, expectations, anxieties related to the career. And some of them are powerful politicians, leaders, leaders of the companies, leaders of the business, the families, and so forth. Today, what is left? Not even a single person is left. And of them, even 99% of the people even have no clue who they were. In a similar way, 200 years down the line of the future, the 7 billion human beings who exist today, guaranteed not even a single person will be left there. Of these, maybe few people will be remembered, like his holy Mr. Dalai and so forth. But the remaining 99% of people those new generations of 20 years, they will not even have a clue who we, we are. This is impermanence. This is what Buddha indicated as anything which stands will fall, anything which gathers will disperse. Anything which is accumulated with an end in exhaustion, 
anything which is born will end in death. This is the law. This is reality. And this reality of the impermanence, of this change that we can see, is possible only if there is a change happening on a subtle level. The change that we see over 50 years is possible only if there is change happening on an annual basis, which is possible only if there is change happening on a monthly basis, weekly basis, daily basis, hourly basis, minute by minute basis, second by second basis, and millisecond basis. And the millisecond, all the composite things, including your body, it seems to be so static there. This is total deception. It's only the weakness of our own eyes not to see the subtle, the subtleties of the reality, reality that we see as static. Otherwise, the image of the body is moving at such a fast pace, the pace at the pace of millisecond change. Likewise, this hall, that was your parents, your children. Your husband, your wife, all composite things are going to change. Everything is like vibration moves so fast. Imagine if you are on a platform, train platform, and a stranger suddenly picks you up, throws you in a very fast moving train. What do you think? Of course, so much of fear. The faster the train moves, more the fear. We never know where this train is taking us. With the train, who decides where this train is taking us? The driver. If the driver is the wicked person, terrorist, then you only take us to slaughterhouse or the torture chamber. And in that case, what is the driver like? In that case, the driver's mind. This mind takes us so fast to his death. What is it taking? If the mind, unfortunately, this mind is under the dictate of the two demons, self-grasping, ignorance, self and attitude. As long as we are under the, the dominations of the contaminations, which, which are self-grasping, self and attitude, but only end up miseries. This is what the Buddha indicated as the second seal. All contaminated things of self-nature. self of what? Sickness, aging, death, tension, depression. Anxiety for any reason, anguish, the pain of separation of near and dear ones, the pain of not getting what you want, the pain of always encountering without desirable things. These are the pains. One moment of such pain is good enough to nullify all the past moments of the bad events, celebrations, festivities, so forth. From this one moment, experience of the pain will make you discover that early moments of happiness, they are like. They are, in fact, so vicious, in fact, suffering nature. Failing to see them as suffering nature, we just get sucked up in this and that we are not prepared to face the future. And now, having faced the future, we realize we regret having been really sucked up by the place of the mind. This is a so whole nature. This is kind of suffering that we go through, and it is endlessly many, endlessly many. So when will all these problems come to an end? Will never come to an end unless until we we'll put some effort. What kind of effort? Knowing that all these problems somehow due to the self-grasping ignorance, it is only through counter counteracting the self-grasping ignorance by introducing the counter force, which is the wisdom of emptiness. What is the wisdom of emptiness? Okay, let's quickly meditate on the emptiness of yourself. And what are you doing? I'm meditating. Well, what is your mind doing? My, meditate, my mind is meditating. What is your body doing? My body is in a meditative posture. Okay. Now tell me, how does this person appear to you? Yourself. How does this person appear to you? Like a dream created by your mind? Or like a movie in a movie theater projected by the moon projector? How does, that, how does this person appear to you? No, no way, not at all like this. It is so independent from mind, so objective from the air. Yes, this is known as self grasping ignorance. How do you know that this is not a valid mind? It says it's self grasping ignorance. How can I know this? Remember what Arana Garjana said. If the mirage were to water, 
by not those close by the mirror I see water. Okay, let us all say this together three times. If the mirror I see would be water, by not those close by the mirror I see water. If the mirror I see would be water, by not those close by the mirror I see water. If the mirror I see would be water, by not those close by the mirror I see water. In a token, in a similar token of reasoning. If this person, if this I would exist subjectively, why do I see this person, why do I see this I as I go closer to the subject? Okay, now let us go closer to the subject. This is my huge emptiness of the self. Let us go closer to the subject. And we are only interested in the self, which is in the soul of the real. We are only interested in the self. Anything which is not the self, we will ignore them. Okay, let us go closer to the self. Go closer to the self. We see there is just a thin, there is the sand skin. Of course, there is not making the sign. Behind there is a fatty tissue, which is so scary to look at. Even there is also not making the sign. Behind that, cartilages, muscles, flesh. Of course, there is not making the sign. Then skeleton. Whole body skeleton. Of course, that's not me. I'm, I'm very appealing with this skeleton. So obnoxious. So unattractive. So repulsive. This is not me, the design. What is that? The heart, the lungs, the liver, and creates the brain. All better. Kidney. The stomach, it is time. None of these sort of parts is me, of course, this is not me. This sort of parts comes to the element of earth. In other words, the element of earth is not me. 100% sure. But we know that each of these are not the self. Don't just go directly and say that none of these parts is me. If you say like this, you will not experience emptiness at all. This is cumulative emptiness of experience, emptiness of experience of emptiness. As a cumulative effect. What is that now? Admin of fire, the admin of water, the blood which is pumped in and out by heart into the possible body. Of course, that is not me, give it aside. Admin of fire, the body heat. The body heat increases and decreases. I don't increase or decrease. Even the body heat is also, admin of fire is also not me. What is that? Admin of space. The space of vacuum in nature, and I am a strong person, so therefore even the space is also not me. Atom of air, the air that, that I breathe in and out, of course that is not me, give it aside. What is left now? Consciousness, the mind. Even the mind is also not me. I'm a male, I'm a female. The gender is positive on the basis of the body, therefore the mind is also not me. And on top of this, people can see me, people cannot see my mind. So therefore, the element of consciousness is also not me, keep that aside. What is left now? Nothing is left there. Where is this person? It is simply not there. It is empty. See this experience. That the self is empty. I discovered that. When closer to Zobji, I discovered that the self is empty. See this experience for a while. Just imagine you will come out of this practice. Again, the self comes back. Again, go into the, the ultimate analysis. The self disappears. Again, comes back, disappears, comes back, disappears, comes back. There's a constant change happening. But of course, the change is not happening on the object. The change is happening on the perception. And perception is purely metal, which is subjective. So, therefore, anything which is part of this change should necessarily be. Deceptive or should be conventional, should be subjective. And this self appears, disappears, appears, dis uh, disappears. This is part of this change. So, the thing this self is, from the object, there's nothing really there, but the self does appear. Therefore, it is just the mere appearance. Mere appearance means it's purely subjective. From the object side, it is empty. Where is this person? 
is empty. Sin sisters for the wild. What is the benefit of this meditation? It's amazing and profound, but what's the benefit? Yes, just as the self disappears in this emptiness experience, so do all the mental disturbances, all the mental disturbances in the form of elaborations. If you subject them to the same analysis, they will all dissolve. Nothing can be traced as the disturbing emotions. Nothing can be traced as the stress or anxiety. They are all dissolved in this, in this experience of emptiness. Say this experience, the ultimate disturbance is sorrow to sorrow. What is that experience? This is known as transcendent sorrow is absolute peace. Amazing. Say this experience. The desire to achieve that state of the experience of emptiness, where all the sorrow, the mental disturbance, agitation, stress, suffering, misery, dissolve. That aspiration to achieve that state is known as a genuine, finite understanding, finite understanding of renunciation. Okay, so when you come out of this practice, take a few minutes, a few minutes to rest before we move to the next version of practice. Okay, next quote, Shita. Ready? A Bodhicitta, the desire to become Buddha for the benefit of such a being. This expression is something which is extremely, extremely, extremely precious and treasure by all the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas. Is, and on the contrary, we are so enriched, we, are, we have so rich in the observe this mind the self-grasping, self-centered attitude. So, we are on a journey to replace this self-centered self attitude with the Archerish mind, the most beautiful Archerish mind, which is Bodhicitta. Because this is an extremely important journey, we need to help seek the help of the three jewels, the greatest support. For that matter, visualize, reinforce visualization of all the possible selfless in front of you, so loving, so caring, embracing each one of you. Also reinforce the visualization of your two kind parents, your family, your children, your family members, and everyone in Mumbai, Bangalore, Delhi, Milky Way Galaxy, and the entire universe. And you are here, you are the mother, and all of us are the children. But the tremendous desire to help them. That is the practice of the four and the bodhicitta on the basis of the four imaginables. Okay, first imaginable loving kindness. How good would it be that all my dear and sensual beings are endowed with happiness and the cause of happiness? The cause of happiness is the consisting of the unconditional love of bodhicitta and the fearless mind of the wisdom of emptiness. May all my dear and sentient beings be endowed with happiness and cause for happiness. I take the responsibility that all my dear and sentient beings are endowed with happiness and cause for happiness. The Buddhas and Bodhisattvas witnessing the living is such a courageous commitment that the mother, after all these many years of hardship raising her children, today. The eldest daughter of 14 years old and the eldest son 10 years old come to the mother, telling the mother, Mother, please take rest. You have done everything for us. We are so, so fortunate to have you as a mother. Now you need to rest. We'll take care of you. I'm grown up. I'll take care of all my siblings. The mother could not believe her eyes and ears. Tears rolling down my cheeks. This is exactly what has happened to all the world sometimes. The world sometimes are there. So proud of you today over the courageous commitment that you made. And 
this plant and the in, incredible um, the joy the Buddhist person feel in folk and Vajra Moon and the in folk, the compassion of mission minds, the central nexus which is very soothing, lies to his ultimate centuries. The mere touch of life's nectars with God's and is yours. It steals in all happiness and also happiness with the most essential is yourself. And you will listen to such a miracle sound to us all the most essential beings. We are intensely happy to take three deep breaths sound and relief. Next to the measure of compassion. How good would it be that all my demons and beings are free from suffering and the cause of suffering, the cause of suffering primarily consists of self grasping ignorance and self centered attitudes and offshoots in the form of inappropriate tension, afflictions, and the contaminant karmas. <coughs> May all my demons and beings. Be free from suffering and the cause of suffering. I'll take the responsibility that all my innocent beings are free from suffering and the cause of suffering. The Buddhist Bodhisattvas will instantly make such a commitment in the intense happening part of you. This part of happiness and the omission of the compassion of mission minds, the sum of nexus, where you my superiors with all innocent beings, a mere touch of life's nexus with the Bodhisattva is yours. Questions of all the miseries and cause of miseries. And you with this such a miracle assignment to us all the dimensions of beings, you're intensely happy. Take three deep breaths, silent relief. Underscoring all the four mesh goals is the unconditional love to us all the most beings. Reinforced visualization that the tremendous love and affection that you feel unconditional love that you to us all beings today. You are looking in the eyes of each and every sentient being. Reassure them that have no fear, I'm there to take care of you. And all the demons and beings, they feel so happy, so secure. And feels themselves as so special in the audience. And with our mind, with folded hands, let us make the beautiful commitment, the commitment of the most beautiful mind of Buddha Chitta that can possibly exist in this universe. <coughs> let us see these three times together. May I become Buddha for the benefit of all my dear mother sentient beings. May I become Buddha for the benefit of all my dear mother sentient beings. May I become Buddha for the benefit of all my dear mother sentient beings. Slowly transform this beautiful mother Bodhicitta into a spotless, clean, white moon disk, housing the city with the heart. It's amazing that you made such a courageous commitment to become Buddha, but how come that you can become Buddha? Yes, of course, I have a Buddha seed, the seed of perfection within me, refers to Buddha nature, it is there within me. But how come that it has not been activated till now, since time you were till now? Yes, of course, it's all because of my own mistake of trusting the two demons, self grasping and self the attitude. And today I'm disillusioned, Dis disillusioned by these two. They are no more my friends, they are no more my friends, and they are the worst of my enemies since time immemorial till now. I give the chance to them to bring happiness to me, to bring fearlessness, fearlessness to me. But on the contrary, is to always attract fear, fears and unhappiness with me. Today I'm disillusioned. And so I'll just exterminate these two demons. How will I exterminate? 
by introducing the counter force. What kind of counter force? The wisdom of emptiness. What is the wisdom of emptiness? Quickly, the truth experience of emptiness. What are you doing? I'm meditating. You have constituted six elements, yes? Which of the six elements is you? None. Take us to the six elements. Where is the stuff then? Nothing left there. So this self, besides the mere appearance, nothing is there really from the object. This one is empty as object existence. Okay. Just bring the six elements to your mind. What are you seeing? I'm seeing six elements. Where is this person? This person is not there. To my amazement, to my surprise, it is not there. It's empty. Stay in this experience. Slowly transform this the, this fearless mind of the wisdom and tennis into a spotlessly clean thumbs up white vajra. What do you want see the one test? At your heart. <clears throat> it's amazing. Now you have the moon symbolizing the conventional bodhicitta, which wishes to become the Buddha from the world of all spiritual beings. And you have the Vasha symbolizing the ultimate bodhicitta, which is a non-dual wisdom emptiness, to see the reality as it is. Yes. This moon guarantees that you will be freed of this self and attitude, and Vajra guarantees that you will be free from the self grasping things and all its offshoots and subtle stains. It's amazing. Yes, indeed, it's amazing. But what about your dear mother's social beings <coughs> for whom you have genuine bodhisattva? Yes, that's true. With in, intense love and intense compassion invokes the Vajra moon in your heart, multiply interminable triumphs. Share, share the self version moon, one self version moon at the heart of the mother, one self at the heart of the father, one self at each, each one of your children, one self at everyone here in Bangalore, on the earth, between the galaxy, and the entire universe. Now amazing, everyone, all my dear and such beings have to watch the moon. They are going to be guaranteed to be free from the fears and unhappiness. They are going to be guaranteed to be um, the rich, rich in the level of the fearlessness and infinite happiness. That's amazing. Yes, that's amazing, that's true. But the Buddha's Buddha self is there watching us since the time we started this ceremony, we started this practice. Yes, of course we we'll invite all the Buddha's Buddha self to Request, request and invite them as the, the guests and the witness to undertake the aspiration goals of the Bhagavad ceremony. I suggest you making this request. I know what the object of such a means that is so to the to infestations to all those